Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What do you want to do today? Huh? What do you want to do today? What was that? I said, what do you want to do today? If you've ever experienced a situation like that, where one person can't hear another person, you know just how frustrating that can be. Maybe you're at a concert or you're in a crowded marketplace, or maybe you're speaking with someone who just hasn't turned on their hearing aids yet for the day. Regardless of the situation, when one person can't hear another, it's difficult to have meaningful communication. It's frustrating. In fact, it can get so frustrating and demoralizing that eventually either the speaker or the listener, or maybe both, just completely give up on trying to communicate. In our lesson for this morning, Jesus meets a man who couldn't hear or speak. This man had no doubt his fair share of frustrating situations trying to communicate with others. His ears were clogged up and his tongue was tied. Jesus needs only one word to change everything for this man. Ephatha, be opened. With this word, Jesus opens the ears of a deaf man. And he opens the ears of our deaf hearts. Our lesson begins with Jesus traveling to the Decapolis, a series of ten cities located east and southeast of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus had not spent much time here. It was outside of the bounds of the land of Israel. Yet he was still popular. A crowd had formed. And this crowd brought Jesus a man who is deaf and mute. And the crowd wanted Jesus to place his hand on the man to heal him. The crowd was clearly already in awe and amazement of this Jesus of Nazareth. Who was Jesus of Nazareth? It was sort of irrelevant. They knew that he healed people. He was able to cure many ailments thought to be incurable, and he did so with ease. He didn't use medicine or advanced tactics. Jesus would touch someone, and immediately they would be healed. We've already read the end of this account. We know that Jesus will heal this deaf and mute man. But it seems strange that he begins by taking the man away privately, pulling him away from the crowd that had brought him there to be healed. Maybe you can relate to this experience. You're in an email chain or a text message, group chat, something to that effect, and one person finds out it's your birthday and they wish you a happy birthday, and then everyone else floods in with their birthday wishes as well. Maybe you feel loved by that mass of birthday wishes, but if you're anything like me, just one personalized and meaningful happy birthday wish means far more than a slew of hastily typed in happy birthdays by people who have clearly forgotten that it is my birthday. Jesus' whole interaction with this man, it's kind of like one big personalized happy birthday. Jesus pulled this man away from the crowd. He wanted to show to this man that he wasn't doing this healing so that he could gain popularity with the crowd. This was no political stunt. This was something that was done for this man and for this man's benefit. Jesus then launches into a string of nonverbal gestures, basically like sign language, to communicate with this man. He begins by taking his fingers and putting them into the ears of this deaf and mute man. This is a very strange gesture, but it communicates to the man that Jesus is going to do something to fix his clogged up ears. Then Jesus spits. Then Jesus touches the man's tongue with his finger. To our 21st century germ-conscious ears, this seems particularly gross and strange. What was Jesus doing? 
But for this man, it helped communicate that Jesus was going to fix his speaking problem. This wasn't just a gross German-fested gesture. Instead, Jesus was showing respect to this man. He wasn't just going to heal him because the crowd wanted to, doing so without explanation. But Jesus wanted to communicate to this man what was about to happen. Jesus gave one final gesture. He sighed and he looked up to heaven. Jesus was communicating that the healing that was about to take place was not some merely human healing. This healing was from God himself. This was a divine healing. Then Jesus spoke the one word that would change everything for this man. Ephatha, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were unclogged and his tongue was loosened. Now he was free to speak once again. No longer would he have to live in situations of frustrated communication. Jesus had healed him, and he had done so with just the power of his word. Even though Jesus had pulled the man away privately, a crowd had still managed to form around him, witnessing this healing. This crowd was amazed, and they began to tell other people what had happened. Jesus immediately commanded them not to tell anyone what they had witnessed, but the more Jesus tried to dissuade this crowd, the more they kept telling other people. The crowd was in awe of Jesus' power and might, and they exclaimed, He has done everything well. Jesus has done everything well in our lives also. He has healed our deafness and our muteness. Jesus comes to us with his power. He doesn't want us to live in situations of frustrated communication, like people who have had their hearing aids die and can't find a replacement. Jesus cares about us. Jesus used that word, ephatha, to heal this man's deaf ears. But we need a Jesus who does more than just heal physically. We need a Jesus who heals our deaf hearts and souls. The Bible makes it clear that Jesus is capable of healing any physical weakness and ailment. The Bible has account after account after account of Jesus' many miraculous healings. But when we look at our lives and we see our ailments, our weaknesses, our moments of suffering, and we compare that with Jesus' ability to heal, we might start to question how Jesus is doing everything well. Wouldn't being doing everything well, wouldn't that involve healing his believers so that they're better able to tell other people about forgiveness? When we look at our pain and suffering and weaknesses, and we compare that with Jesus' ability to heal, we might question how God is doing this well. How is he affecting our lives? We're crushed when a loved one passes away. We have broken and fractured relationships with those that we love the most. We're constantly praying, reading God's word, attending church services and Bible studies, and yet it just seems like unbelievers are enjoying so much more success. When we look at our hardships and life, start asking questions like, why would God allow me to suffer needlessly? Or questions like, how is God doing everything well today? What's happening when we ask these questions is that we are doubting God. We are doubting promises that he has made to us, promises like from Romans 8, 28, that he is doing everything for the good of those who love him. When we ask these questions, we're breaking the first commandment and disobeying God's word. When we look at our pain-filled lives, our lives of weaknesses, we realize that we can't do anything to fix them. 
this man who was born deaf and mute, he couldn't do anything on his own to fix his situation. He needed someone else to come and heal him. When we look at our lives and suffering, we come to realize that we need someone to come and heal us. Jesus came with a greater purpose than to just be a physical healer. Do you notice Jesus' interaction with this crowd? He, Jesus tells these people not to tell anyone about what they have seen and heard. It seems so counter-evangelical, so counter-Christian, in fact. Jesus was later going to give the Great Commission. But in this instance, he's telling people not to talk about him? As this crowd went out and told everyone about what Jesus had done, Jesus' popularity grew. Now people started to view Jesus as a powerful earthly figure. Maybe Jesus could throw off the rule of the oppressive Roman government. Or maybe Jesus could be a physical healer of all the nations. As Jesus' popularity continued to grow and grow and grow, it made it more difficult for him to achieve his ultimate goal, his goal of dying on the cross to forgive sins. But even disobedience from a crowd in growing popularity could not stop Jesus from achieving his ultimate goal. Jesus did make it to that cross on Calvary. And from that cross, he said the words, It is finished. A spiritual ephetha. A spiritual be opened. Jesus has opened up our deaf hearts and the Holy Spirit fills us with faith that comes from knowing our Savior, a Savior who has died to forgive all of our sins. Even those sins of doubting God and his promises. If we had thought that we could hear well enough on our own, if we thought that we were hearing just fine, we wouldn't have listened to those three words, it is finished. But when we look at our weakness and pain, we realize that we need healing. We need spiritual healing. Jesus provided that healing by dying on the cross. Three days later, on Easter morning, we hear more powerful words, this time from angels. He is not here, he has risen as he said. And our tongues of faith are loosened. We can speak freely. No longer is there a command for silence because silence is impossible. Everything has been done too well to keep under wraps. Now we go out and we share with others the healing that we have received. At Jesus' ascension, we hear him speak more words. Go and make disciples of all nations. Words that propel us forward. He has said that he will be with us always. We now have a God-given confidence, a confidence to go out and use our loosened tongues to proclaim what God has done for us. He has unclogged our spiritually deaf hearts. Now we are free. Even after we have received this amazing spiritual healing, we still see that our lives are full of pain and suffering and weakness. We still might question how God is doing everything well through our pain and suffering. We come to understand that through our pain and suffering, we rely on someone else to heal us. We rely on Jesus. At the beginning of the sermon, we heard that situation of frustrated communication. And on our own, that's all our lives are. We need someone to come and open our ears and free our tongues so that we can be free and healed. We need Jesus. Jesus healed us powerfully from the cross. He said, it is finished. And now we view every hardship in life as an opportunity for Jesus to once again provide his healing. Jesus has opened the ears of a deaf man. And he's opened the ears of our spiritually deaf hearts. Amen.
And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard and keep your hearts in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise. We continue with our confession of faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true.